a feminist alliance. You may know it as a powerful student group aiming to introduce new change to the university. You may know it as a safe, a safe hub for survivors on campus. It's been 67 days since Protect Warwick Women began their occupation, but their movement shows no signs of slowing down. Speaking to Raw News before the protest began, organisers worried that the cold weather would lead to a smaller turnout, but these fears proved misplaced. By the time the speakers began at 3.30, the piazza was packed. They had all gathered to hear speakers share personal stories of sexual violence they had experienced on campus, and also of the university's failures to respond to that violence. On September 27, 2020, I was sexually assaulted by my flatmate. I refused to silence myself. I refused to make myself smaller for the comfort of my own abuser. So I did, as many others have done surely, exactly what was expected of me. I reported him to the university for sexual misconduct. The university did not listen. Following a series of tireless days, living under the same roof as my own abuser, I waited patiently for him to be removed. For this to effectively take place, the senior warden of my accommodation had to be notified, as only she had the authority to remove him from my accommodation. Despite pressure from report and support for her to do so, she did not respond to my request. And for this reason, he was never removed from my flat. They spoke about how the university was stonewalling them in meetings and refusing to open any direct lines of communication. We've been receiving most of our communications with the university through Luke Metham, which enables them to essentially blame any um, drop in communication or lack of response on the SU rather than actually taking accountability for it. Um, when ben, ben Pithouse has been here three times since then, and on every occasion, we have asked him, can we please be sent the emails which are sent to us rather than them being passed through Luke Metham like a year seven. Um, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we will. We'll send them to you. We'll CC you. Have we been CC'd? No. Have any of our recent emails been responded to? No. Have we asked Luke Metham to ask the university to respond to our emails? Yes. Have the university responded to our emails? No. Has Ben Pithouse come down and said, why don't you draft up a list of things we need to do to get you to leave the piazza and us been like yeah actually that's a great idea and have we sent them that list yes has the list been responded to no and most damningly they accused the university of lying not just to them but to the wider student body about the state of their staff sexual harassment training programs uh one of the main things that uh we can talk about now is uh the lies in the university's a public statement about uh, the Survivors Trust. So one of our demands uh, in our initial list of demands was to have uh, staff training, staff and student training signed off um, by a student group uh, in order to make sure that we felt as if the training was adequate. Um, throughout our meetings, the university's response was that um, this training was already approved by the Survivors Trust. Uh, which is a charity and therefore it did not need approval from a student group. Um, this was something that we obviously just took at face value and although we did continue to feel as if approval from a student group was necessary, um, we felt as if it wasn't necessarily something we'd be able to get through obviously because the university had this concrete defence of oh our training was approved by the Survivors Trust. So however, um, since the release of the university's public statement where they restated that their training was approved by the Survivors Trust and gave that as one of the reasons why they felt as if uh, our demand was uh, unnecessary. Um, we actually had a student reach out to the Survivors Trust uh, for separate reasons and during their communications uh, asked the Survivors Trust about the work they were doing with Warwick and the Survivors Trust responded by saying that they don't work very closely with Warwick at all and actually don't approve the training. Um, so essentially we were being completely lied to, uh, which is quite shocking. They painted a devastating picture of a university asleep at the wheel when it comes to dealing with sexual assault. It was hard to listen to. Um, one person I spoke to after the event, who didn't want to be interviewed but still wanted their sentiments recorded, said that had they heard these stories when they received their offer, they wouldn't have come to Warwick. So in the nine plus weeks that we have been sitting here, 
People are still being assaulted and raped up and down this campus. All these people we've been in meetings with are very much aware of this. We brought it to their attention when they pretended they were innocent or feigned ignorance. The lack of humanity in the people who run this university, who promise to take care of us, who we are paying to take care of us, is terrifying. Will Warwick take notice and take action? Only time will tell. One thing's for certain though, protect Warwick women aren't going anywhere. Keep the conversation going. Talk to your friends about it. Talk to your family about it. I mean, talk to your lecturers, your RLT. Um, sign the open letter. This is Ina Mukungu reporting for Raw News. Across campus, online, and on 12.51am. This, this, this is your student radio station.